Now, Daniel Radcliffe, presumably you are familiar with uh, Miriam's potty mouth because... Uh, <laughs> or, or do, well, are you? Because I, you, were, you were in Harry Potter, but did you actually work together? Yeah, yes. oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, we absolutely. did. But I don't remember. I've been told there was a swear jar involved on set, but I, I can't remember that. I don't you remember you swearing a lot in front of... I was I probably think... careful when it was you, okay. but when, you know, with the other kids, I didn't involve... <laughs> <laughs> Just talking backstage, if that's what you call that funny little grub right, grubby area. <laughs> 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 apparently, it's 20 years since Harry Potter came out. So, the, since we started filming the, the first, first one. one. And your yeah. balls have dropped since then, <laughs> I can tell you that. It's, uh, <laughs> it's a relief to us all. <laughs> <laughs> So. <laughs> yeah, because they're just we kids then. We get it, yes. <laughs> 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 It's just, yeah. <laughs> but, but it's interesting because for Professor Sprouse, which, you know, you were in the second film and the last film. Yeah, I right? should have been in all of them. Yes. <laughs> and that was a grave oversight, and I I'm holding them. you responsible. I told them. <laughs> but anyway, it was wonderful to be in the two that I was in, yeah. and I'm very proud of it. But you do get recognised as Professor Sprouse. I do. I, I mean, I think I've changed since then, but people do recognise me. And uh, funnily enough, in Lithuania, <laughs> I was... <laughs> Lithuania. Are you <laughs> you, have you come just to see Professor Sprout? <laughs> I don't think so. Are the films called Professor Sprout and the Deathly Hallows in Lithuania? No, but I was mobbed in Lithuania. Maybe because I was Jewish, I don't know. Are the only one there? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. stop, stop cheering now. I just think that's incredible. Like, you're being mobbed in Lithuania and you're Professor Sprout. Imagine being this bad. I know. What, what was it like? I mean, it, it, it's weird and funny, and I think I, the best way to see it always was, like, weird and funny, because yeah. it will, it, you know, and it ebbs and flows, and sometimes it's in your life a lot, and sometimes it's not in terms of getting recognised, and there's been lots of very odd moments. I was chased out of a science museum in Spain, um, and I was just like... <laughs> it was sort of fine, because everything was in Spanish there, and I couldn't understand anything inside, so it was time to leave anyway. <laughs> yes. Um, and then, uh, so but, yeah. You got re but someone thought you were something else in New York recently. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know what? Actually, this didn't. This did not come up in. In with it. yeah. So um, <laughs> I did recently. So me and my girlfriend fostered a dog, uh, and it's, it, we sort of got our friends to adopt it. This is not necessary for the story. There's a dog with me. Um, <laughs> I I, we, I was on the street with this dog, and my, my girlfriend was in the shop, and so I was. And it was very cold. Hoodie. And I got my hoodie and my fleece, uh, my fleece hoodie, and then a big coat over that. And the dog was really cold, so I was like, oh, I'll just kneel by you and like stroke you and like try and keep you warm. And then. And, uh, and then I saw this guy like look up at me like ten yards away and smile, and I was like, yeah, and just carried on. <laughs> and then he walked past me and he came back, uh, like yeah, got about five steps past me, and then just reappeared with a five dollar bill over my shoulder and just went, get yourself a coffee, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really like my girlfriend came out and I was like, I don't think I'm I'm like I'm wearing nice clothes. I thought like, <laughs> like, like I don't know. Yeah, so I was I was very much I, 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 I that was a wake up call. Apparently I have to maybe, you know, was, was your dog you on a string? No. <laughs> I do maintain because the person that owns the dog has also been mistaken for a homeless person with this dog. Uh, I think the dog just looks very cold and sweet and vulnerable. Don't blame the dog. Uh, no, I know. <laughs> I did have a sir encounter only a few weeks ago in Los Angeles. A rather fancy, in fact, extremely fancy restaurant. Well, tell them uh, what it is, because they'll know. Um, it was the, uh, the, the, the Tower Bar. Uh, Sunset Tower? No. Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, guys, are no, cool. No, no, I'm not no, cool. No, 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 no. Say, say, say it again. Look at The Tower sit. Bar. Oh, man, the Tower Bar! What? That's The towel bar is a spot. I, yeah. I got a feeling this isn't going to work out it's quite the way. <laughs> um, so we, we had Look. four of us were seated at a table. <laughs> about 15 minutes later, into the restaurant walks Sir Paul McCartney. Wow, good. Now okay. Paul and I have a very slender relationship, but it's lasted wow. decades. Okay. Uh, I, I first <laughs> encountered him in 1964. No. When his girlfriend 
Jane Asher then uh, told him oh. that I loved Aston Martins. I was driving a battered old Ford, but Aston Martins were my dream car. Mm. She told him this. And one night, yeah, we knew he was seeing the show. There was a knock on my door. And I said, yeah, come in. I'm there in my underwear. Mm. You know, like As usual. <laughs> well, I always... As you greet people normally. <laughs> I hang around like that just in the hope. <laughs> you uh... come in, I'm in my pants. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm ready for you. <laughs> And the door opened, and standing there was Paul McCartney, who I had never met before. And this was 1964. Wow. And uh, he said, Jane says that you're like Aston Martins. Here, drive this. Wow. And he tossed a bunch of keys over That's to me. Cool. And it was an Aston. It was his. Amazing. Cool. Amazing. Anyway, do you want to hear the restaurant? Let's keep going. Keep okay. going. Okay. We're in, we're in the so fanciest we're, restaurant we're, in, in LA. Yeah. We're now in the Tower Bar. <laughs> Tower which... Bar? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I am feeling less and less good about this. Keep going, oh, keep, keep going. Okay. You're in there. Oh, so Paul McCartney's come I, in. You've oh, known him since yeah. the 60s. And uh, uh, he sees me and comes over, and uh, I stand up and say hi, and we have a big hug mm. in the restaurant, and I'm very much aware that there's uh, all the tables are full and this kind of thing. And we talk for five or six minutes, and he goes and sits down. Five minutes go by, and into the restaurant, Walks Sir Ringo Starr. I swear to you, I'm, I'm, I'm not well. making this. <laughs> were they together? Yeah. They were. They were. Oh, they were at the same table. Well, they were at the same table. Yes. Oh. Well, um, well uh, we we uh, at the tower. At bar. the tower. Bar. <laughs> bar. <laughs> well, good. Man, I am expecting so many free meals. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, we finish early, and I get up to go, and Paul stands up to say goodbye, and we have a hug, and as we have a hug. He says into my ear, do you know Ringo? And I said, yeah, of course. Come on. <laughs> I've never met him, but I'm... He said, oh, boy, Ringo, come on, come over here. <laughs> Hang on a minute, he said, Sir Ringo, Sir wow. Patrick, Sir Paul. <laughs> hey, we've got the Knights of the Round Table! <laughs> <laughs> You've noticed something about British people and the way they speak that we do a funny thing. Well, uh, well, we here, think it's well. Funny. Uh, no, I mean I love all the every regional <laughs> accent, every dialect. Uh, I'm a big fan. You're not getting uh, into that scone please, mess. Please, please don't <laughs> <my neck. laughs> um, uh, but I, I like that because there's so many accents to such a small country, everybody sort of puts on different voices when they're doing little bits and yeah, stuff. Yeah. But I had a thing where uh, I was checking into a hotel and somebody came out and said, oh, do you need help with your bags? And I, I thought they were doing a bit. <laughs> so um, I went, oh, I've been traveling all day, I have no idea. <laughs> kept talking like that. <laughs> so I had to like slowly transition out of it. And I know that that sounds like an exaggeration of their voice, but then I was back in the country several years later and they were on TV on Gogglebox because it was Steph and Dom from Gogglebox. Oh, and they were really amazing. Like that. They, so they actually talk like that. That is hilarious. I never knew that that was a real hotel yes. bed reference yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. But I you stayed there. there. I stayed there. Yeah. And accidentally made fun of them to their face. <laughs> <laughs> Have experience of vicious animals. You've well, creature. No, I've, I feel like I've I've had a lot of um, uh, professional dealings with animals. Yes. Um, I did a film. I did a film with a lion. Once I had to shoot with in a, uh, with a lion. Um, mm. You know, wild lion. And uh, well, I say wild. I mean, he's been in films. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Bad boy. And uh, we had to do. I so I arrived to shoot this scene. And I, the first thing I noticed was that the camera crew were in a steel cage. <laughs> Only big enough to contain the camera. <laughs> I thought I'd better ask some basic safety questions. I said, what is, what is the sort of safety thing here with this wild lion? And they said, well, the first thing is we make sure, before the lion works, we make sure that he has sex. Just to take the edge off. I did uh, that. <laughs> And I said, well, that's, I'm not particularly worried about the 
I'm not worried about a randy lion. Uh, I'm more worried about the eating kind. And they said, that's all right, because we will feed the lion. Uh, we won't feed him too much, because then he'll go to sleep. And I said, again, that's not really... Because <laughs> I know what it's like. You open a packet of crisps, you have one, but then you can <laughs> want more, don't you? <laughs> and the third thing they said, the third sort of safety measure, was that the lion's downhill. Uh, and he's very lazy, and he probably won't chase you. <laughs> and again, I was just not really reassured by this. And I said to the chap, "But what? You know what? If it does happen, what, what are you supposed to do?" And he took great delight. A South African handler took great delight in telling me that if a lion charges you, useful advice: you have to reach back, you take a handful of shit, and you throw it in the lion's face. <laughs> and I obviously said, "Where do you get the shit from?" And he said, "Don't worry, it'll be there." <laughs> I really, really enjoyed uh, Get Out and uh, everything you're doing is fantastic. Oh, I appreciate you, bro. Wonderful. I what? made a song for you, actually. <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean? Really? What do you mean? I know, it's quick, but it's the best I could do in a Please. short amount of time. <clears throat> What's going on? <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> Daniel Kaluuya. Daniel Kaluuya. <laughs> Daniel Kaluuya, <laughs> Daniel <laughs> well, yeah. oh, no. well, that was beautiful. Oh, gift you have. Oh, thank you so much. I'm just out here auditioning for everything. <laughs> the thing is, you know, we all do other jobs when we're, when we're starting out, and uh, lots of people do the classic catering. Uh, David Schumer, you went one up from waiting tables. You did waiting tables with a little bit extra. I waited tables for a long time, about seven years, but my first gig... Um, was as a roller skating waiter uh, at this. <laughs> I was, yeah, I was, I was good. Um, <laughs> and it was at this really cool place in Chicago. Really cool. It was. It was called. <laughs> it's called Ed De Bevex. I worked at Ed De Bevex. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, they opened one the in L.A. The stars that came out of this place. Because <laughs> you had to play a character. Yeah, I was Romeo. I was Frankie. <laughs> 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 Do you roller skate or not? No. Oh, oh so no. only Romeo roller skated? Was no, that no, thing? well, in Chicago, they had roller skating. Oh, right. So, um, and I was uh, roller skates and... Um, and, the, and I was serving all the outdoor tables. So there was a huge parking lot and a pretty wide sidewalk with tables lined up like picnic tables where families would come and, and you'd make not very much money um, with minimum wage um, uh, in the States, as, as you're aware. Uh, but you made a lot of money by performing stunts. So I would, like, line up people's kids, and they would, like, you know, uh, they would, you know, kneel next to each other in a line. I could probably jump over three or four. At a time. <laughs> I'm serious. And then I would say, hey, you guys want to see it? You know, the parents were like, yeah, go for it. <laughs> right? And I just, like, I would just take off down the street and jump uh, all over, uh, I mean, over, over them, and then... <laughs> And then uh, kind of, like, skid to a stop, and then I'd get, you know, all these fancy tips from doing it. But you had to play a character, and my character was, like, uh, Romeo the Romancer. You know, he was kind of based a little on Travolta in, you know, Greece or something. You know what I mean? Hey. It was a 50s diner, so I had a big pompadour and, you know, bigger muscles at the time. <laughs> is, now, is this from that time? Is this when you were Romeo? No. <laughs> It's that was a whiff of Travolta. I had that, that earring. I had, cool, that, I had that earring. That screams Romeo. Yeah. No, but my hair was not as long as that. It was more of a pompadour. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, similar, okay. similar embarrassing time. 